Leaders Volpez. Welcome to Leaders Volpez. My name's Kirsty. I'm Phil. Today we are going to run through the game Pugly Pirates from Teleportal Games. This one here. So this is a family weight game of high muttony on the high seas where dogs and terriers will scrap it out in a, a muttly way, battling for victory and treasure. Treasure being those juicy bones. What a pawsome idea. Pawsome idea. Yeah. I like Some might it. even say it's terrific. Terrific. Yes. Love it. This game is designed and all the artwork done by Andrew Klinkenberg. Published through Teleportal Games, who is Andrew's own publishing house. Um, and you'll be finding this on Kickstarter relatively soon. Um, and hopefully it'll be something that's of interest to you. And it took all my effort possible to keep Kirsty out of pirate costume for the duration of this video. I really so... wanted to do it. I was even going to put little dog ears as well. <laughs> Seriously, this is what I have to put up with. <laughs> so, without any further ado, let's talk about how the game works. You're going to join us down at the table. After we do an explanation, we'll put ourselves back on camera with you and we'll go through a demo round. So hopefully, by the end of this, you'll know how to play Pugly, Pugly Pirates. Pirates. Here we are at the table and we are middle of a game, uh, maybe beyond the middle of a game. Because it's currently got two victory points, I have one. Um, so we're going to we're playing to three victory points at the moment because um, there's three different lengths of game. There's a short game playing to three victory points, medium playing to four, and then five victory points. Um, depending on how long you want to stay on the high seas, don't get your paws too wet there. <laughs> now, um, in a game of Pugly Pirates, what you're seeing in front of you is a map of the tropical islands, and in the centre of it all is Port Saint Bernard, um, where. Uh, your pirates can rest in peace because pirates don't attack each other at Port St. Bernard. So how are we going to play the game? So each of us are going to have a little ship and on that ship are some cargo spaces and there's also some spaces around the edge of the ship for equipment including the dreaded um, dog poo token uh, which you can place on an island. Ew, I know. Which you can place on an island and it affects the mutiny, not mutiny, value of your crew. So you've got your ship and you're going to be sailing from island to island during your turn and you're trying to achieve one of three victory points. You can achieve victory points through challenging and challenging can be challenging any other player on the board or it can also be challenging these trade ships which you currently have one out on island four. Um, they come through island events and map events so you're going to get trade ships happening. If you beat the trade ship um, you're going to get the, the goods and the loot that are on the trade ship. So that's something if you don't then um, you'll, you'll carry on and unfortunately if you challenge each other people are going to steal your stuff which is not always nice. Um, ships can be upgraded to make them tougher and stronger. Kirsty's got a significantly upgrade. Look at my little dinghy compared to Kirsty's actual ship. Um, and they, the, the ships have got these crates on them. So as you expand the ship, you increase the crates. So the, the tokens around the edge will remain static and you've got a limited supply. The crates in the center are one item only. And those items can be your crew, which are the monthly crew pools. And you have a, a fixed number of those you can recruit. Kirsty's um, found Robinson Shih Tzu, um, which gives a one additional monthly crew pool. Um, she's also loaded up some dog toy cannons, which increase some of her traits on her trait board. We'll talk about that in a moment. You can also store their bones. Uh, bones are currency within the game. You can also store uh, trade goods, which are uh, coconuts, bananas, or sugar. And the value of those at Port St. Bernard is reflected by these dice, which will increase each turn by one. They can never go beyond six. They can never drop below one. Every time you trade a good with them, you'll reduce them by one. And if you're trading multiple goods, every time you trade a good, you reduce by one. So the goods decrease in value as you trade. Always worth keeping an eye on your opponents, see what they're doing, because they may, um, you may be able to sort of get to Port St. Bernard before them and slash the price of the trade goods they've managed to pilfer on the island. So how do we get to the islands? Good question. So um, each space on the board reflected by the islands or Port St. Bernard has a numerical value between it. 
Traversing that numerical value is going to cost you movement points, and that will allow you to move to a new island. When you move to an island, a couple of things are going to happen. If an island has island events still associated with it, this one does, you're going to turn those island events over and resolve them. Some of them um, can be left or ignored for other players. If, you, if an island doesn't have, you're going to draw a card from the um, island events deck and that's going to establish what happens on the island. And all kinds of good and bad things can happen. Kirsty's found a kraken already, yeah. um, but I found some coconuts and yeah. And a telescope. You've had all the positives and I've had all the negatives in this, in this uh, version of the game. It's not very fair. Okay. So, Just saying. <laughs> there you go. So why do you want to collect things? Well, you want to collect things for the second victory point condition, which is, um, sorry, third victory point condition, which is burying treasure. So you can always turn up at an island, and as long as you have um, control of the island, having more Muttley Cruples on it, and Kirsty's getting quite progressively close to having a lot of Muttley Cruples on, um, you can bury treasure there. And by burying treasure, that's going to put your victory point on, actually, because he's got one too many at the moment out there. Um, oh. So that allows every buried treasure, you basically need to convert three bones into treasure. Um, and the bones are either bones from your boat or bones that are already existing on the island. For example, I found a pearl here and had two bones on my boat, so I could bury a treasure. And then the final victory condition is controlling islands. And for every two islands you control, you get one victory point. So Kirsty has got three islands in control. Her Muttley Cruples are on three of the islands. Now, if she gets her Muttley Cruple on one more island, it's going to give her another victory point because she's in control of two islands. I will need to figure out how to stop that happening. Do, do, do. Dun, dun, dun. But she's quite a long way off at the moment. So yeah. we'll figure out how that's going to work. Um, so you're going to be traveling the islands, spending your movement points and um, either leaving crew behind, um, picking up cargo, selling cargoes, upgrading your ship and um, challenging trade ships. So you know, there's three steps at the bottom of the trade ship. This one is weak in strength, but look and navigation is stronger on. So you, you challenge how you like. It's actually agility. Agility. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be challenging how you like on the ship. So. Um, that's how you're going to score victory points. We're playing to three victory points in this game. So without any further ado, let's just talk about through the round as we play through it. So I'll put us on screen just over there. Okay, so. Ta -da. Hi, we're here again. Now, what we've got in front of us is um, at the start of a new round. So what's going to happen at the start of a new round is we're going to First and foremost, we're going to be drawing a map event card, um, and you'll find these on the handy dandy reference card. So we're going to increase market prices by one. Our bananas and sugar are already at six, but our, our coconuts will go up to four. We're going to allocate the turn order, and that's done by, we start at island number one, and all the islands are numbered. And the first person we come across going clockwise around will get the first player token. So I'm the green, so I'll get number one. <sighs> Kirsty is at Port St. Bernard, so she will get number two. Um, we draw a map event card, and in this instance, we have a trade ship. So let's establish where that trade ship is going to go. It's going on to Island 6, which is up there. Um, so that's it. Well, I'll keep that out of the way. Um, it's up there. So that trade ship has got five strength, um, four luck, and four agility. So less agility, more strength on that one. And you get bones if you beat it, whereas this one you get coconuts if you beat it. Mm. If you beat it, you've also completed a challenge, which will give you a challenge victory point. So we then um, start to look at calculating how far we can move in a turn. So uh, because we're a captain, we always get two movement points. And I move my movement points up on my... Um, stats board. I now get one movement for every Muttley Krupal on my ship. So I'm going to get another two there. So I've got four movement to spend. Um, I've got some bananas in my hold and Port St. Bernard isn't that far away. Now if I move to Port St. Bernard that means I can't move anymore um, but I can still trade at Port St. Bernard at that point and I think that's fairly sensible for me. Now uh, so on my turn, I'm going to spend three of my movement points because this value between here and Port St. Bernard is three, and I'm going to move to there. I spend my three movements, so I've got one movement left, but I can't go anywhere on the board with one movement. Now, at Port St. Bernard, I can do a bit of a trade. So I'm going to sell my bananas. Bananas are currently worth six, but 
because you sold it. They go down by one. Down to five. What would you like to purchase with your six bonds? So um, I'm actually going to buy this whole section <gasps> so I can actually increase dun, the size dun, of my boat. Dun. Which is, that's cost me five bones and all prices are listed here. So the whole segment is five and everything else is one. So I've got one bones left mm -hmm. out of the six I earned. I'm going to spend that on getting another motley cruple so I can travel mm. faster around the high seas. And that is... That's, do you know why? It's because they use puppy power. Nice. <laughs> and that is the end of my turn. So it then goes on to play a two, Kirsten's right. turn. So... Generate movement. To start off with, my um, captain's movement ability of Black Jack Russell. Nice. I like what they've done there. Is two. I have one additional point for each of my dogs, my Motley crew. One, two, Motley three, pools. four. So that's actually one, two, three, four. It means I've got six movement, which is quite nice because I've been struggling with my movement in this game up until now. So I think. I will. I'm going to go into this corner here. Which Island five. Costs three movement. So I go one, two, three. So you've got three left. Yep. Uh, I will turn over an island card as there's no islands there. Okay. Shrine. Discovered, discovered a shrine. So one of the lost shrines to St. Bernard. Receive a bone as a miracle now or two bones for each additional lost shrine that I find. Keep this card and return it to the deck once I've used it. Now, because the space in my ship, I'm only going to take one set of bones <coughs> now. Okay. And, and then that gets returned. So I will take a set of bones from the store here and place it into my ship. So that's the first part. Now I am going to choose to leave one of my Mutley crew pulls here on the island. So Kirsty now has control of four islands, so she gets to put another victory point token out in the this marked territory. Okay, so you got three movement so left, what are you going to do? I've still got three movement left. Now, there are two trade ships that I could challenge here. Um, what's that distance? So that one's two distance, but then I can't use the one after. So I think I'm going to try and go to this one because it's got a lower strength. I have a higher strength. So I'm going to move to this island here and take on this trade ship. So now let's first things, let's talk about stats because we haven't talked about stats yet. Each of your captains has um, a strength, a look and agility stat. Mm -hmm. Kirsty's boosted hers with some dog toy cannons. Um, so her strength, Obviously. yeah, so she's got more strength, more agility and more look than me. Um, great. Um, the other stat that we've not really talked about is Muttony, um, and different cards will send that up and down, and that affects your movement by, mm -hmm. if it gets positive Muttony, you get plus one, plus two. If the Muttony gets closer to happening, um, you get minus one, minus two, and then you can't move unless you resolve things, so you don't want to get down there. Manage your Muttony, people. That's the mm -hmm. best advice we can give you. So, Kirsty gets to pick one of her stats to challenge this trade ship. Now this challenge is exactly the same as if you were challenging another player. So what's going to happen in a challenge is Kirsty will roll her dice because she's the challenger and she will add half the value of whatever she rolls and then the trade ship will, and that's added to whichever stat she chooses, then the trade ship will roll at half its value as well and we'll see who wins the battle. So Kirsty, which stat are you picking? So my highest are strength and agility at five. Looking at the trade ship, the strength is four and the agility is five. So I want to take on the weakest one. So I'm going to choose to take on strength. So their strength is four and mine's at five. Ideally, I would have preferred it to have been at six, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So to begin with, I will roll for me. So at the moment, I've got five plus... One. One? Yep, yeah, one and a half, but you're always yeah. round down. So that was a three. So, so that means I've got six. Oh, I'm going to fail. <laughs> so the trade ship rolls a one. <gasps> yes! Fate was in my hands. Um, so Kirsty gains a victory point and takes a cargo, which in this instance is going to be coconuts, onto her oh, ship. Oh, yeah, I've got no... Oh, yes, I have got room. So the coconut will go in here in my little space here where I left my little dude. And unfortunately for me, uh, it's the end of the turn as well. 
and Kirsty has three of the victory points that we said we were playing up to. So that's our sample round. Kirsty. And how to win the game. Apparently. So <laughs> Kirsty, what do you think? Pugly pirates. Okay, so one thing that really makes me giggle when we play this game is all the, the cute puns that I've put in everywhere. Uh, like my character is the Black Jack Russell. Uh, I think yours is the Broadside Broadside Bulldog. Bulldog, you know, uh, Port, St. David. Bernard. Uh, sorry, St. Bernard. Um, the, you know, it's all the little, little puns here and it, it just raises a little smile, which is quite nice. Yeah. Um, in terms of gameplay, I... I really like the way that they've ascertained first player once you're in the, the games are playing. Um, so obviously, as you saw from earlier, um, the choice of first player is based on where they're located on the board. So actually, that I think that's quite a nice little touch. Yeah. Um, I think it's quite fast paced. There's no, there's no hanging around waiting for the other person to have a go. Um, because they're doing a, um, you know, they might be um, doing an event which might actually affect you because of the trade. You know, it's a, it's not just a multiplayer solitaire. You are no, you're interacting, definitely interacting with each on the board. other. Um, how about yourself, Phil? What do you like? Yeah, there's some nice take that elements. Um, the challenge is quick and simple, which is mm. really nice, especially at a family weight game. So it's not sort of bogging down with statistics so yeah. that you have to like figure out exactly who's won the battle. Yeah. The battle is sort of resolved in the blink of an eye. And that feels like it's pitched at exactly the right level. There's yeah. a real risk sometimes when you have a game with conflict that you can actually bog yourself down a little bit in how that conflict resolves. So a quick roll of the dice, half it, and then add it to the overall um, stat value, trait value, and yeah, you're away. So that as a, as a way of resolving challenges, really simple, really straightforward, works really nicely in the game. The game plays uh, nicely up to four players, and the more players you have, the more congested the island become, mm. islands become, which um, slow the game down a little bit in, a, in, in respect to uh, players not uh, players contesting islands more than yeah. in a two-player game. Two-player game, you can kind of avoid each other for a little bit. Yeah. Um, although I kind of let Kirsty to get away with things, but I hadn't realised how much movement she was generating on that last turn, um, <laughs> which just got her to where she needed to be. So it's definitely a game where you have to watch your opponents yeah. as well and figure out what they're doing and what they're going to resolve next or what they might be wanting to resolve next. And I think when you're talking about a family game, that level of interaction is a really nice way of... of, of pushing conversation and humour, yeah. which yeah. the game has in abundance and the gameplay itself delivers good humour as well. It does. Including the doggy do trap, which you didn't see in effect in the game. But this, yeah. this little thing, um, if someone wants to travel onto an island that's got one of these, they're going to lose some muttony scores because no one likes standing in the doggy do. No, no, um, no. So you've got different ways in which you can like interact and interfere with other players. So. Yeah, overall the game plays really nicely. It's it's really nicely pitched as a family weight yeah. game and it's it's great for families sat around the table. You can have it out on the board and set up in a good sort of five, ten minutes yeah. and be playing. And as long as everyone's comfortable with the rules, um, you are ready to go. It's a nice pace game as well. It's approximately 45 minutes-ish depending on the players yeah. that you've got. And so. whether you want a long, medium or short game. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the artwork's really nice. Like all the everything's really clear. You know, the map events, you know, very clear that that's relating to the whole map. The island events, you know, relate just purely to that island. Nice iconography throughout. So yeah, I think they're doing really well here. Yeah, if you're looking for a game that gives um, family fun, then Pugly Pirates is definitely one you should check out. So give it a look and see what you think. Check it out. It's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> Thank you all for your time today. It's been greatly appreciated. If you've enjoyed the video, find it in any way useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget we're also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for Ludus Spolpes. Thank you all for your time today. Thanks everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.